Hi, my name is Tom Caswell, and I am the project manager at the A list of features here that we're going to go through. Uh, we'll start with the importing and exporting, and we've made quite a few improvements to the, those features. Uh, I won't show all of them, but uh, let me just go through each of those. Um, IMS con cartridge is now uh, is now able to be imported. Turn on my screen sharing. Okay, so I'm going to build a course using the course builder, which is a feature from our last release. I will put it in a test department and we'll call this course um, uh, we'll call it kitchen science. And this is a a course that uh, we can that I just downloaded from the MIT website, and using their uh, course download link in their left-hand navigation, and I will just fill in some uh, test, some sample information here, and we'll go ahead and select the. MIT content package as our package type and you can see that we have all the other pack types available here including the new uh, IMS common cartridge and the um, little backup package types that have been added. The entire IMS import engine has been, uh, has been improved so that the content comes in more smoothly with uh, less problems. So I'll go ahead and go to my desktop and pull in the course that I found on MIT's website and this is all you have to do so I click submit so the example here would be useful in the case of downloading an MIT course and using it under it, the MIT Creative Commons license and then making adjustments to the course or uh, updating it to suit your needs as a professor and then and then teaching that course um, that revised course someplace else so that's an example of what you might want to use the MIT content packages for um, the other features here for importing that are very useful are include blackboard content package which allows you to take Courses that have already been developed in the Blackboard CMS and improve and make adjustments and then import them directly into your open courseware uh, EduCommons site. So that's a way to minimize uh, redundancy when you're when you are creating course content for both a CMS and an OCW. So there are, as I mentioned before, there are lots of lots of new. Um, formats that are available and those are just a few but the Moodle backup is another one that is uh, is new this this release and uh, allows again allows to allows uh, for minimizing the redundancy between the Moodle CMS and uh, the EdCommons OpenCourseWare so I think we're just about done with our import and there it is. So here we have kitchen chemistry. Um, all 
of the course content has come in directly from the MIT course package, as well as the metadata. You can see here the tags have all come in as well. Um, the license from MIT is also come across into the import down here at the bottom. This is a MIT license. And the um, up here in the course info portlet, you can see that 175 uh, objects have been imported into this course. They are all in the progress state, and so they can be worked on and revised or adjusted as, as needed, and then the course can be published. Uh, just as an example, here is the, the readings that has come in into our import, and we can open a guacamole recipe, and it will open as PDF, and of course those files have all also been imported. So everything is running from the Educommons site, so there is my PDF for guacamole. Okay, so that's just an example of importing. Now we can also export, so I can take this same course and I can um, go into the the Kitchen Chem Chemistry course home page and select the IMS tab and now I can export an IMS package. I can export this same course. Uh, the IMS file that I can export <coughs> is kitchenscience.zip and I can modify that if, if I want to. And then these the options here. I can export this now as an IMS common cartridge, a Moodle IMS content package, uh, if I wanted to move it back into Moodle, or I can export it as a standard IMS content package. So I won't do that for the sake of time, but those are all available, and they would just result in a, in a zip file that would be downloaded to your desktop. So now just to go into the other features that are new with EduCommons, I want to talk a little bit about the WordPress feature which is also new in this release. Uh, let me back up into uh, let me go to my course page here, my kitchen chemistry, and if I wanted, for example, to take this page and move it to my WordPress blog, I could do that. This button in the top right corner of the page allows me to move the page of content into WordPress. All I need is the WordPress URL and my username and password. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And this is just providing another form of use. And especially as we see that WordPress is gaining popularity with uh, a lot of a lot of um, professors who choose to develop their own course content using something simple they have control over, such as WordPress. So this would be one example of a way to, to uh, read content from an Educon site into a WordPress blog. So we'll put in the username and password, and we will send this to our WordPress blog. Oh, of course we have put the URL correctly. Okay. So I'll try that again. Okay, and the kitchen chemistry page has been sent over to my uh, test WordPress blog. And over here in my WordPress blog, I can go to the pages, and you can see that it has just come in from less than a minute ago, um, and that is a page kitchen chemistry that I can then modify and update um, and publish. So that's just an example of exporting to WordPress. Um, <clears throat> now I'd like to show an example of uh, a new 